Hello everyone, welcome back to our project of deploying a smart contract with Python to the Robston Ethereum network. Previously, we learned how to install dependencies to use Web3 Python in Google Colab. We built a simple Solidity smart contract and we imported the contract into Colab. In this lecture, we're going to deploy the contract to the blockchain. So join me back in your Colab project. The first thing we have to do is connect to the blockchain via a provider. So we're going to instantiate Web3 with the Web3 object, passing in the HTTP provider. You could also use a testing provider or a local provider, but in our case, we're using an HTTP provider. We're going to be using Infra. So we need a provider URL for the HTTP provider. How do we get a provider URL? We can go to infura.io, create a free account at infura and create a project. Then under the project settings, choose the endpoint of Robson, which is a test network. So it's not the main net, it uses test ether instead of real ether. Then copy the HTTPS link. Okay, and then go back to Colab and paste in your URL. This is your connection URL. Okay, so now you'll be able to connect to the blockchain. Okay, next we're going to create a contract in Python from our Solidity code. So we're going to use web3.eth.contract in order to instantiate our simple number contract. For that, we have to pass in the ABI and the bytecode for the contract. So where does the ABI come from? This comes from our compiled solidity and at the key of contracts, then the contract of the simple number dot solidity contract. Then inside of that file, we have to specify the name of the contract and then finally the ABI. So that's the format for getting our ABI because we went through the compile standard route. Okay, so we can paste out the ABI to verify that it's all correct. Now, what about bytecode? Okay, so bytecode is going to follow a similar process. We're using our compiled solidity at contracts at simple number dot solidity at simple number. And this time we're getting EVM. EVM is going to be containing our bytecode. So then we pass in bytecode. All right, and after that also we have to get the object. Okay, so quite a lot to get to the bytecode. But there's the bytecode eventually. So that's the syntax for getting the bytecode from our method of compiling our Solidity code. Okay, so now we'll have the simple number. Okay, so let's see here. We're passing into our contract the ABI and the bytecode. Just have to pass in the ABI and the bytecode arguments in this proper syntax. There we go. Now we have the simple number contract. Okay, so then we can take that contract and we can deploy it. So for that, I'm going to create a new code cell and I'm going to call simple number dot constructor. So I'm calling its constructor, which means I'm deploying it. I also have to build a transaction because I can't deploy for free. I have to transact that deployment over the blockchain. So I'm going to set the gas price using web3.eth.gas price, the current price for a transaction. The chain ID, I'm going to pass in a chain ID for this network, which is three. So that is the Robston chain. If you're using a different chain, such as the mainnet, well, you would have a chain ID of one, two, or three, depend or more. Other networks as well have different chain IDs. So this is for the Robston chain. As well, we're going to pass in from what address are we sending the transaction. So we need our wallet. So let's create a variable wallet and here pass in your wallet 
address. Okay, so this is my wallet address, which is from MetaMask. It's one of my accounts on MetaMask. So if you don't have MetaMask, get the MetaMask browser extension, then create a free account and make sure you're connected on the Robston test network. You're also going to need to get some ETH in your account, which you can get from for free from a Robston faucet. A faucet means you can just copy your account address and request free ETH and you'll get it because it's not real ETH. It's ETH for a test network, which means it's only for testing purposes. So I have 0.34 ETH, but because I'm on the Robston test network, this ETH is for testing purposes only. If I go to the mainnet, you can see I actually have zero ETH on the mainnet on this account address, but I have some ETH on the Robston test network. All right, so make sure you get some test ETH on your MetaMask account if that is the account you're using. You don't have to get the account address from MetaMask. You can get it from any wallet that you have that can connect to the Robston test network because that's the network we're using in this project. Of course, you can connect to any other network you'd like. You don't have to connect to the Robston network, but that's just what we are doing in this project. And you have to own this wallet, okay? Because later we'll have to send in our private key, which is the password, and only you have access to that. Anyone can access your wallet address, but only you can access your private key. Now, as well, we're going to pass in a nonce for the transaction. Okay, so for this nonce, the starting point, we can get the latest transaction count. So I'm going to pass in nonce and create a variable using web3.eth.get transaction count at my wallet. So I can test that out in a different code cell. Let's check the value of the nonce. Okay, it's 10, which means that I have 10 previous transactions already. Okay, so then the next one will be added to the blocks. Okay, next, we're building the transaction. Yes, okay, great. We can save this as a transaction. Okay, then we can run the code cell and we can inspect the value of the transaction. So we have all the data here, the chain ID, the data from the address, the gas, the gas price, the nonce index to whom, and then the value. Okay, so that is the information about the transaction, but how do we actually send the transaction? Well, first you have to sign it. So I can't just use this and stop here because then anyone could use any wallet. I have to sign the transaction, which means use my private key, my password to verify that I actually own this wallet. So for that, I'm going to call web3.eth.account.sign transaction. I want to sign the transaction variable, which has the data about the transaction. Then I also want to pass in a private key. The private key is the password to your account. So in MetaMask, if that's where you're using to store your accounts, in MetaMask, you can see your account details and then click export private key. You'll have to enter your MetaMask account password to see the private key. So you don't want to show anyone your private key because then they can steal your whole account. So for this private key, we are going to pass in the value of the private key for your wallet address that you're using. So make sure it matches the wallet address that you're using. This will be a long string of numbers and letters. So this isn't my real private key because then you could have my account. So this is just an example. Before it, I want to add OX as well. So make sure you have OX in front of your private key. If the private key already has OX included, then don't include it here. But it has to start with OX, okay? Then we can use that private key to sign the transaction and we'll have a signed transaction. All right, so we have to pass in the transaction and the private key. So I'm going to enter my real private key and then show you what the results of signed transaction would be. 
Okay, so here I've pasted out the value of signed transaction with a valid private key. Okay, you can also print it out, print out the signed transaction. Okay, it's kind of the same thing. So you get the hex bytes and about the hash of the transaction. Okay, next we've signed the transaction, which means we verified that we own the wallet that wants to do the transaction. Next, we have to actually send it with web3.eth.send raw transaction. Here we pass in the signed transaction dot raw transaction. The result of this is the transaction underscore hash. Okay, so you can run that code cell and then paste out the value of the transaction hash. All right, so there we have the transaction hash and then we can get the transaction receipt. So to get the transaction receipt, we're going to call web3.eth.wait for transaction receipt and pass in the transaction hash as the argument. Then we can run that code cell and we can inspect the transaction receipt, which just contains data about the transaction. So now we have deployed the contract. Right, so we've been able to send the contract to the blockchain all via Python. Coming up next, we are going to learn how we can interact with the contract. So our smart contract now lives on the blockchain on the Robston network for the Ethereum blockchain. And we're going to interact with it with Python. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.